Hi, I'm Stella and welcome to my channel with 30 Books where I talk about books and not DIY home renovations. I am in my kitchen. I am painting my kitchen. It is the 5th of January. I have had 18 months to paint my kitchen but I decided I'll get it done in two days before I go back to work next week. It is a very humid, sticky day here in Melbourne. I think it's about to bucket down with rain. So I'm going to have a wee little break and also talk about my plans for my channel for 2022 in keeping with the uh, renovation theme. I'm not overhauling the channel as such. So uh, stick around. Now, one of the beautiful things about, uh, you know, when you're painting the kitchen, you can listen to the radio, uh, but I am currently listening to an audio book, The Yield, by Tara June Winch, and it is magnificent. It is being narrated by, it's narrated by Tony Briggs, and it is extraordinary. Now on to 2022. Happy New Year uh, out there in YouTube land to all my subscribers and my loyal uh, watchers of my video. So my channel is all about Australian books. I'm still going to be, you know, waving the flag for Australian books and Australian writers. So I'm going to open up a little bit more because I have to be honest, I have missed reading some more and, and also not just reading, but talking about overseas books, you know. One of the things I would really like to do, and uh, this is kind of, which was always my intention, was is to give uh, a bit of space for books that always get a lot of attention so maybe for people who are published by small print publishers uh, independent publishers for writers who self-publish uh, hybrid publishers as well so that is my goal for 2022 I'm also going to have a regular content every Friday uh, Australian Eastern, oh my, actually it's Australian Daylight ta Time, 10.30 on Friday. I will be dropping a video right here. Now, speaking of um, small print publishers, I have recently read a book, uh, Andal's Garland by Helen Burns, out by Odyssey Books, which I think is a hybrid publisher. And I'm not quite sure if they are an Australian publisher or not. Helen will clear this up for me. And Helen is an Australian writer. Now, this is, was gifted a copy. I read it on my Kindle. Uh, the reason I bought a Kindle was so I could read more self-published work because some people are only publishing, e-publishing. But I think Alan Endell's Garden is out in paperback as well. So it is about a story, it's about a 15 year old girl in 8th century India who under, you know, like 14 year old girls at the time had to get married. Like girls had to be married by the age of 14. So she's 15 and she decides she doesn't want to marry a mortal man. She is going to man marry a deity, uh, a kind of a Krishna, not Krishna himself, it is a... A version for want of a better word now the more she falls in love her poetry begins to awaken now Andell is actually a Tamil poet 8th century in modern times Seisha who's traveling in India from Australia finds a book of Andell's poetry and it awakens something inside of her because she's actually married to a man who has chosen celibacy and their lives entwine. Now it does have a dual timeline. I loved both timelines. I thought it was really engaging but there was something about the Andell's timeline that I was so compelling and Helen Burns obviously knows India really well because it it wasn't she somehow it's not a huge book but it's somehow she just evoked 
beautiful India without having to over explain. She just wrote about it as a matter of factly, as though all the readers knew about India. I absolutely loved this book. It is not the type of book I would ever uh, normally have felt. Uh, that I would ever read. In fact, when I was asked to read and review a copy, I did sort of go, mm, I don't think this is my cup of tea. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Congratulations, Helen. I also understand she's got another book out in collaboration. Now, I don't know, as I said, I didn't know a lot about Krishna and Indian deities. So I did a lot of Googling and I found it really interesting so and uh, I'll put the link where you can find um, Andel's and I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly Andel's Garland a couple of, a couple of other Australian books I just finished Ella Baxter's new animal it came out I think at the beginning of 2021 end of 2020 oh my god what a debut novel so it's the story of a it's a story of Amelia who I think is in her early 20s uh, it's really a story about grief and death and dying so 20 something Amelia works for her family's mortuary business she does the makeup for on the uh, dead people the cadavers for want of a better word and then tragedy strikes her family and it is the story of how she deals with the grief it's over a very short period of time and she becomes involved in the I think it's BDSM bondage discipline sadomasochism world uh, slightly um, she becomes involved in that world it's God, there's some really brutal scenes. It says that it's a hilarious and heartbreaking book. I didn't find it funny at all. This book started off, I just thought I am here all the way, but it kind of lost me. However, I would absolutely recommend this book. I think she, Ella Baxter, is a stunning writer. I am really curious about reading her follow-up novel. I think it's just she's just going to get better and better. The what I didn't quite believe or I didn't get a sense of her grief or I didn't feel connected um, with the person who died. And I got a bit confused because I thought we started off the book with her grieving and then it turns out that wasn't it, it's something else. But I don't want to give too much away. So that is Ella Baxter's New Animal. I have been dipping in and out of Charlotte Wood, The Luminous Solution, Creativity, Resilience and Inner Life. It is a beautiful book for you, us writers out there or anyone interested in um, the creative life. If you enjoyed Elizabeth Gilbert's Big magic you are going to adore Charlotte Wood I have been looking I just think it's high time Australia had a book like this like we heard from one of our artists and the difference with this and big magic uh, Elizabeth Gil Gilbert comes from a place of you know all the novices and um, you know arts for art's sake as such um, Shella Wood is an established writer, so she is coming from the place of it's it keeps searching and keep looking and um, oh look it's it's just a masterclass it is absolutely wonderful Charlotte Wood the luminous solution I'm not going to bang on about it anymore just go and get it now a non-Australian book. I heard about this from Simon from Savage Reads here on YouTube. If you haven't seen his channel, go there. It is called Assembly by Natasha Brown. I would have done it in one sitting, but I fell asleep because it was night time. Look how little it is. So the narrator of Assembly is a black British woman. She's preparing to attend a lavish garden party at her boyfriend's family estate set deep in the English countryside. At the same time, she's considering the carefully assembled pieces of herself. And this is as a black woman in the corporate environment. It is 
absolutely brutal and it is there is no escaping for white people uh, when you read this it is it's uncomfortable reading but um, her writing is spectacular and her truths are equally as spectacular so that is assembly by Natasha Brown an English writer Yep, there, I did it, did it. I uh, got it out from the library. And uh, that is your first 30 books for 2022. I hope you stick with me all the way. I... Now, I do have some other reading goals, which I will talk about in upcoming videos as well. But in the meantime, I've got some painting goals I'll, I need to finish. Don't forget to like, comment, tell me what are your reading goals for 2022? I would love to hear about them. But uh, until then, OK, and remember, it only takes 30 books a year for the Australian publishing industry and our writers to flourish. And I'll see you next time.